of the DPCI, uh, that is uh, Lieutenant General uh, uh, Godfrey Libia. We have the National Director of Public Prosecutions, Advocate uh, Shamila Batoi, and the uh, Deputy National Director of Public Prosecutions, Advocate uh, Rodney de Kock. Uh, we set out a media advisory this morning uh, in line with our investigations into the VBS. Uh, we felt that it was critical that we give feedback to the nation as to what is transpiring. Uh, and that is what we will be dealing with only today. And therefore, without any waste of time, let me hand over the mic and the podium to the National Director of Public Prosec I mean, to the National Head of the DPCI uh, to come and give us uh, his uh, address. Thank you. The members of the media, Advocate Batoy, Advocate de Kock, fellow South Africans, good afternoon to all of you. Thank you for honoring this invitation to share with you the progress of the investigation into the Vendor Building Society Mutual Bank, VBS. The bank, as you know, was founded in 1982 as a building society and became a mutual bank in 1992. Today, members of the Directorate for Priority Crime Investigation, DPCI, conducted a simultaneous search and seizure operations in 10 premises in Houdin and Limpopo provinces. The team also executed warrants of arrest on four suspects. Three other suspects are expected to hand themselves today. The eighth suspect has been um, affected by COVID-19 quarantine requirements. So as soon as uh, all of the uh, relevant processes are completed, we will be securing the attendance of the A suspect also in court. The DPCI has been working in this matter since August uh, 2018. Uh, we have been uh, investigating as an inquiry, which inquiry was converted into a police case docket in May 2019. It investigated the conglomerate of uh, offenses with the guidance of the National Prosecuting Authority. Thus, it was decided to charge the suspects with 47 counts of various criminal offenses. Uh, these are five counts of uh, the pattern of racketeering activities in contravention of the Prevention of Organized Crime uh, Act. That is the POCA. Twelve of these counts are of theft, common law offense. Seven of these are uh, for fraud, which is also common law. Fifteen counts are corruption, that is uh, in terms of the contravention of the Prevention and Combating of Corrupt Activities Act. Seven counts are of uh, money laundering in terms of uh, the POCA legislation. A criminal case was reported by the South African uh, Reserve Bank and specifically the Chief Executive Officer of the Prudential Authority. This is a juristic person operating within the administration of the South African Reserve Bank that was established in terms of uh, Section 32 of the Financial Sector Regulation uh, 9 of uh, 2017. The complainant in this case formed an opinion 
in his then capacity as the registrar of VBS Mutual Bank, uh, that there are difficulties that uh, in case the uh, bank was to be uh, requested to repay the monies that uh, were being owed, it will be unable to do so. So that uh, informed the opinion which uh, compelled a case to be opened. On the 11th of March 2018, the Minister of Finance acting within the powers conferred upon him in terms of uh, the Mutual Banks Act that read with the uh, Banks Act of 1990 appointed a curator for the VBS. On the 13th of uh, November 2018, upon the application of the Prudential Authority, VBS was put under compulsory winding up by the High Court of South Africa, the Howden Division, which is in Pretoria. A provisional liquidator was appointed on the 14th of November 2018. The investigation revealed that uh, as on the 11th of March 2018, there was a general deficiency in the monies received by the VBS, uh, which amounts to 2 billion 296 million 599,008 rand. The scam was hatched on the 4th of July 20. 17, when the Board of Directors for VBS approved financial statement for the year ending on the 31st of March 2017, making VBS look richer while it was, in fact, insolvent. The financial statement were shockingly inflated. The allegations are that the chairman and the executive officer, CEO, signed the director's responsibility statement to the annual financial statement that was uh, prepared by the chief financial officer of VBS. The investigation has, has revealed that the, ten, uh, the eight men who are the suspects either unduly, directly or indirectly benefited at least 122 million 287,863, which was not due. Our investigation revealed that uh, 20 municipalities deposited an amount of 3.7 billion, of which 2.2 billion was paid back, leaving an amount of 1.5 billion of, uh, in VBS. The suspects are expected to appear in Palm Ridge, uh, regional court on Thursday, tomorrow, the 18th of June 2020. The investigation of this uh, magnitude are complicated and labor intensive. The DPCI received this investigation during August 2018, as indicated, and immediately started putting together an investigation team consisting of 15 investigating officers, some of which were seconded from the greater uh, service, the detective service. Let me conclude by thanking the efforts by the investigation team of serious corruption investigation within the Directorate for Priority Crime Investigation, DPCI, the National Prosecuting Authority, and the South African Reserve Bank, as well as the Financial Intelligence Center that have played a role. We would also like to thank the liquidator who played a key role in ensuring that there is cooperation with this investigation. The team work that was put in place here is a recipe for success. We would like to thank you for having attended this session. Thank you very much for the uh, attendance. Thank you. Thank you um, to the national head of the GPCI. Um, I would like now to request uh, 
the National Director of Public Prosecutions to come to the podium uh, to address the nation on the same issue. Thank you. Thank you very much, Brigadier. Um, good afternoon um, to, firstly, General Labia, Advocate de Kock, um, members of the media, um, and the people of South Africa. Today marks a really important step in the progression of this particular matter, and I'm not going to deal with the details of it, which Advocate Labia, General Labia, has outlined for you. Um, the update and background and overview that the General has just given gives assurance that the team that he has mentioned is really hard at work and have been since this matter commenced in August 2018. It presents one with a certain level of confidence that indeed the relevant authorities are making headway in key cases. Whilst today's developments are an important milestone and we are certainly pleased and commend the advances that have been made by this team, as the General has outlined, we all know that still a lot of work lies ahead. Although it is imperative that we move with speed to finalize these matters, the team also has to be meticulous and painstakingly go through all the evidence with a fine tooth comb. We have to do this in order to ensure that in the end, Justice does prevail, and the rule of law prevails as well. We owe it to all the investors of the bank, in particular the elderly men and women of Limpopo and beyond, who lost their hard-earned earnings and lifetime savings. We have an ob obligation to all South Africans in general to deliver justice in this matter as they have, in many ways, been victimized by this crown, crime. But in particular, it is our duty to the direct victims of corruption, corruption in this particular matter. We can only restore confidence in the criminal justice system if we deliver quality service to those who have been, for those who have been harmed. We can only turn the tide against corruption if, if those who commit these crimes are arrested, convicted, and sentenced. That means there must be consequences. As we know, the greatest deterrent to crime is the certainty that there will be a thorough investigation and prosecution, and there will be consequences. So in that regard, today's um, operations and developments marks a key milestone in achieving that objective. And it's important to note what the General has said, that this investigation commenced in August 2018. August 2018 to June 2020 is actually short of two years, and I think we must really commend the team for the efforts and for being able to bring these legs of this particular case to the courts at this point. It is clear that the prosecutor-guided approach adopted by this team with the NPA and the DPCI, as well as the other partners that the General has mentioned, the Reserve Bank, the FIC, all working closely together, making sure that the relevant independence uh, safeguards are in place, will definitely ensure the quality control and will ensure that this is properly addressed. Ladies and gentlemen, whilst the pressure to prosecute these cases is understandably enormous, believe me, I feel it, and given the pervasive culture of impunity that this country has sa sadly become accustomed to in recent times, and which almost entrenched itself, it must be borne in mind, mind that quality investigations and prosecutions regrettably need time and patience. We do need to ensure that we deliver on all fronts. Given what this country is emerging from, I feel and share the impatience of the public for justice. But we want to ensure the people
that there are so many behind the scenes that are hard at work under very challenging circumstances, but that the wheels of justice are turning and that the rule of law will prevail. Our actions will indeed speak, loud, speak for themselves. So once again, I want to thank General Libya and the team, the investigators, prosecutors, and all the others that have worked very hard in this matter. And as the general has said, the sus suspects will appear in court tomorrow. Thank you. Thank you to the National Director of Public Prosecutions. I think now we will be opening the lines for questions. Um, we have calls and WhatsApps that will be directed to the uh, main table. So, Ignatius, uh, are we ready? Do we have any calls from your side? No, we don't have calls we don't. at the moment. That's good. Um, any WhatsApps? Uh, Questions that we can uh, start with? Thank you, Chair. Currently, there are no questions on the WhatsApp line. I think we, if we don't have any questions, I'm sure everybody is happy with the, uh, the briefing. I think there's something as well. Okay, we now, I think now the lines have been opened. Uh, I'm seeing some movement at the top. Okay, let's. Can we get an indication whether we're getting any calls? We're getting. Okay. Journalists type in now. Okay, we'll uh, give them time to raise their questions. Okay, I think the telephone line people are not coming through. Can we get those WhatsApp questions if they've been posted already? Uh, thank you, Chair. There is a question from Kale Cohen from News24. Um, the question is, the NDPP has mentioned that it takes time and patience. Can she take the country into confidence and provide an undertaking that politicians who benefited from VBS will be made to account? That's one question for now. That's one question for now. The National Director, I think, let's respond to that. Thank you. Um, uh, is this uh, microphone working? Is it, is it? Yeah. Thank you very much for that question. Um, what I can say is that the country may rest assured that we will certainly um, prosecute wherever the evidence takes us. And I'm not going to outline any particular category of persons, but if there's evidence of criminality and we are satisfied um, that the relevant um, threshold for probabilities of a successful prosecution have been met, uh, we will prosecute no matter where that takes us. Thank you. Uh, any other question? Thank you, Chair. The second question is from Danita Hunter from News24, she's, she's asking, uh, the, her question is directed to the NDPP. Do you expect this prosecution to be protracted or is, is there a will to conclude it speedily? And the second question is from Nazir from Glow TV. Will bail be opposed tomorrow at the court hearing? And the follow-up question from Kanita to the General Libya. Did officers conducting the operation face any resistance, resistance from this morning? Those are the three questions for now, Chair. 
Okay, thank you. I think the national head can respond to the... Thank you very much. Uh, With regard to the question as to whether the officers uh, received resistance uh, this morning, I can certainly say no, no resistance at all. We have just indicated that uh, three of those that uh, we should have arrested have not yet been arrested. But uh, that is not a resistance. Uh, we will probably, uh, uh, they will probably be handing themselves over. So there was no resistance at all. Thank you. Thank you, General. Uh, Advocate, there are two questions uh, sure. that were requested. from. Thank Sorry. you, Brigadier. Um, on the issue of uh, the speedy uh, prosecutions, um, what I want to make clear is that we are, as a prosecution, intent upon these matters being finalized as speedily as as possible. But what we have found in a number of of high-profile cases is that there is a strategy to delay matters um, and and to deal with a number of interlocutory applications. and, And so, you know, the prosecution can't really control that. But we have decided that as the NPA, we are going to take a much more vigorous stance with regard to these uh, dilatory tactics and that uh, we have sought council's views on this and we are certainly going, we have a, a, a strategy that we're putting together to ensure that dilatory tactics that tend to be employed uh, to delay these cases uh, will be much more vigorously opposed by the NPA. As far as the bail is concerned, bail, yes. sorry on that, the prosecutors will consider the matters and decide um, what to do tomorrow. Thank you. Thank you, Advocate. Um, do we have any other questions? Yes, Chair. We have two more questions on the WhatsApp number. The first question is from Jan Delanke from Rapport. Is their investigation into VBS scandal complete, or is it is it still continuing? In other words, are this all the prosecutions that will follow from the more than two billion that was lost at the former VBS bank? The second question is from Genevieve Quintel from Business Day. Will there be more arrest in this matter, or are this eight the only ones will be arrested in connection with VBS? Uh, the next question is a follow-up from Kale from News24. How will the person who is in quarantine be handled? And another follow-up question from Nazir. Are you planning to attach any property of this arrested? That's it for now, Chair. Thank you. I think the first three questions uh, are relevant to the, to the general. Um, the last one, I think the national director will have to respond to that one on the attaching of assets. I think that would be directed to the national. I mean, to the national. Uh, but, um, I think the first, let's start with the first three, general. Thank you. The first three questions. The first one, uh, been from rapport, whether uh, there is will still be investigation uh, on VBS or this is uh, the last that we are seeing, uh, the investigation of this magnitude is usually conducted by way of uh, dealing with the legs. Uh, we are going to continue to deal with this. You shall also recall that there are municipalities that shall have uh, invested. We haven't talked about it, and we are not going to talk about it. But. Uh, In general, we can just say that uh, the investigation is continuing. And then uh, whoever benefited, uh, whatever crime has been committed, we will leave no stone unturned. In in this investigation alone, more than a thousand statements were obtained. Some of them already point that uh, there is a direction that uh, we need to look at. Whether there will be more arrests in VBS, uh, as I've indicated, this is the first leg that uh, we are dealing with. The investigation will guide us. We are the investigation is not uh, 
concluded. So the probability is that uh, whatever evidence direct us, we will be following that one. So look at this uh, space. Uh, the last one was uh, how we will be handling uh, the suspect who is uh, who's affected uh, by way of COVID. There are procedures of dealing with those, so we respect those arrangements that uh, whoever is uh, affected by COVID need to be handled in a particular way. You will appreciate that uh, we can't be irresponsibly uh, fetching a person today and taking to court when there are processes uh, that uh, we need to follow with regard to COVID. We have got a warrant of arrest. It remains valid until it is executed. So we will secure the attendance of that uh, uh, suspect person uh, when time is uh, ripe to be able to uh, appear in court. So that is uh, with regard to the three questions that uh, were raised. Thanks. Thank you, General. Uh, the attachment. Yes, thank you. <laughs> thank you very much, Brigadier. Um, the Asset Forfeiture Unit is looking into this matter. And um, so at this point, there hasn't been an application that's been brought. But depending on what the outcome of the investigations will be, they, um, we are certainly looking to you know, recover um, any proceeds of crime um, that we may be able to. But at the moment, the AFU is still busy with that. Okay, thank you. Um, can we get the last round if there is any? We really need to wind up. Any questions from the telephone lines, Ignatius, anything from your side? Yes, I have. Yes, sir, I have Govan uh, from ENCM. Oh, Govan. decided to to leave all right anything from whatsapp i think Thank this will be chair. the last round of questions that will be taken thank you chair we have four more questions on the whatsapp the first one is from lizeka from news 24 ndpp can you be frank and take south africa to your confidence are you investigating any political figures in the vbs scandal the second question is from Zwandi Lembeje from SABC. He's asking, will the arrest also extend to some of the officials within the municipalities that are being fingered in this saga? The third question is from Mpoma Toho from SABC. Mpo is asking, how many people do you expect to arrest who are implicated on the scandal? And Tidi Madia from News24 is asking the General Libya, he's, she's saying, General Libya, a lot of work has been done in the media on VBS. Are you relying or using that information in the investigations? The next one is from Pauli van Veik from Daily Maverick. He's saying Floyd Shibambu of the EFF said he communicated with General Libya over VBS. Can the General speak to this, please? That's it for now, Chair. I'll take the first one, yeah. and perhaps I think the rest are all for you, yeah. General. Thank yeah. you. Um, so the first question about political... F well, firstly, let me make it clear that, you know, the NPA does not investigate, uh, is not investigating this matter, but prosecutors, as it is being investigated by the DPCI, but prosecutors in this prosecutor-guided model... Um, is working very closely, and there's a team of people that are working together on this matter. So I, I, I thought I'd address this earlier on. Uh, in, you know, the, there's, you know we, we really are determined to ensure that what people have termed probably the biggest bank robbery in this country, that those that had anything to do with this are held accountable. And so wherever the evidence takes us, we will ensure that um, you know, the rule of law prevails. Thank you. Uh, General, the other questions I think you can take. Thank you very much. Um, the question of uh, whether the officials that uh, are involved in municipalities uh, will be arrested, 
Uh, I have obviously uh, answered this uh, previously. Uh, we are here dealing with uh, one leg that is more involved with the running of uh, the bank itself. I have indicated that there are uh, 20 municipalities that sh shall have invested uh, monies in the uh, VBS. So that part of the investigation is continuing. We will not be saying uh, whether uh, individuals will be arrested or not. It is the space that uh, you can just watch closely. So that investigation uh, is uh, in an advanced stage. The next one was uh, how many more to be arrested. And uh, as I have indicated, we will not be counting those that uh, we are going to be arresting or securing their attendance in court. Uh, the method of our investigation is that uh, we don't even name them before they are being uh, submitted at court. Immediately after their appearance in court, they will even change the title. As of today, they are the suspects. We have arrested the suspects. By tomorrow, when their title become the accused, then can we start naming those that are the accused persons. So we will not be indicating how many uh, we are going to be uh, charging or prosecuting. This is a process that uh, will be informed by evidence uh, that uh, we will submit before the uh, National Prosecuting uh, Authority. The next one was uh, whether we are relying on what uh, has been presented in the media. Uh, in the media, those who make statements are not required to prove the allegations. What we do is uh, whatever we gather, we must have that uh, view that uh, we are going to present this at court with the purpose of proving what is being alleged beyond reasonable doubt. So whatever is uh, being uh, said in the media, it assists us as a, an information to follow. But we are not taking that as evidence. What is being said, we follow all those uh, inclusive of uh, the report that shall have been uh, presented by those who conducted an inquiry. Those we take as uh, information to help us that uh, we, there is a stone that need to be uh, tend. So it's not the media per se that uh, we take as a uh, conclusive uh, evidence. The question of uh, having communicated with uh, uh, Mr. Shivambo, uh, I wouldn't like obviously to be dealing with uh, the communication by individuals that uh, as a police officer on a daily basis I receive calls from different people uh, who are inquiring about uh, aspects, be it investigation, whether we are conducting or otherwise. So, uh, but any communication with uh, the head of uh, the investigation will never uh, misdirect the investigation. So, I, I can only say that uh, from time to time, individuals will communicate with us. But the content of that communication we will not divulge unless the individuals themselves want to go public and say this is what uh, I have communicate, been communicating with uh, the head of uh, the investigation. Thank you. Uh, can I have one question? Uh, yeah, from the telephone line. Yes, I have something uh, myself on the line from the SNBC. Uh, welcome, madam. Is she connected? Yes, thank you very much. Uh, Hungwani, it's from Kelly here. Hungwani. Okay, let's, yeah, let's, let's get the question, my brother. Yes, um, it's from Kelly Masego from the SABC. Uh, just to be uh, more broadly and specific, uh, Advocate Shemel Apatoy and General Libya. Is your investigation looking into what was referred to in Advocate Terrence Powell's report as the kingpin 
who is the ANC Limpopo provincial treasurer, Denning Caesar, who is also by the organization been placed on suspension on this matter of VDS and getting municipalities to invest into this mutual bank. Are you investigating Denning Caesar? And on the issue of uh, the EFF uh, leadership, is, is your investigation also looking into the role that uh, Brian Chivambu, the brother of uh, Floyd Chivambu, played into the bank and the various reports that the Daily Maverick through Polyphon Vague has showed the money trail of uh, VTS flowing into allegedly into, v, into issues of these two particular leaders and a particular credit card that is linked to VDS that was uh, allegedly funding the lifestyle of EFF leader Julius Malema. And also on the issue of uh, municipalities, is this also looking into the money that were paid into then um, mayor of Zembe, which would be Florent Radzilani, the suspended deputy chair of the ANC and member of the provincial legislature in Limpopo? Is this, is this investigation also looking into the various political leaders who have allegedly had their hands in the cookie jar in the looting of the two billion rand at VBS. Thank you. Do we do we still have another question from the technicians? Okay, um, General, I think you have a problem of having to rehash everything again. Thank you very much. Uh, as we have indicated, our practice is that. Uh, we do not name the people that uh, we are investigating. If there is an investigation, we are not about to be confirming that uh, we are investigating so and so. All what we can say is that uh, no stone shall be left unturned. So the uh, information that come to our attention, every piece of information will be followed. So uh, as to who uh, the kingpin is, whether we are investigating that, whether the individuals belong to a particular uh, political party, the EFS, EFF, as you mentioned it, or the mayor, we can just generally say that uh, no stone shall be left unturned in the investigation. We are not investigating specific individual. We are guided by the crime that has been committed. Part of uh, the, the crimes that uh, we have mentioned is money laundering. There is a process of washing money that may be coming from VBS. And all those rules that the money shall have uh, followed will be followed in the uh, investigation. So let me say that uh, our investigation is not directed at specific individuals. We are guided by... Do you have on the WhatsApp? Okay. We have a question from Govan from ENCA. He's asking, what was seized during the operation and what is the value of the items? The next question is from... Luvolue, too, from Rhodes Music Radio. The question is, have all the victims' investments been paid out? If not, what measures are put in place to return the monies of those that haven't received anything? That's it for now, Chair. Thanks. General? Thank you very much. Uh, I think that uh, the at the time of uh, the search, there are obviously evidence that uh, we were looking for uh, in the form of paperwork. And then uh, among the items that have been seized include a, uh, a watch that uh, will obviously be uh, forming part of the evidence. Uh, we will Obviously not uh, at this stage be revealing all item by item that shall have been seized. It's a matter that uh, will be uh, dealt with uh, at court. With regard to the issue of uh, the investment uh, that the South African uh, Reserve Bank is dealing with that one. The matter, as you know, VBS uh, is undergoing the uh, liquidation process. So in the liquidation process, there is a mechanism of dealing with uh, 
all of those investors, those who are owing and the like. So at this stage, uh, it is not at the part of the investigation. As we have indicated, we are working closely with the liquidators. We know what they are busy doing, but uh, that uh, will be the responsibility of uh, the liquidator to deal with that. Uh, you shall have read on the media that uh, some of those who have uh, invested certain amount under certain uh, figure have already been paid, but those who shall have invested more than that particular amount is the one that the liquidation process will deal with that one. So that is the current uh, situation uh, with regard to the items that have been seized and the, the people that have uh, invested. Thank you. Thank you, General. Um, I think we have uh, come to the end of the press conference, I mean the press briefing. Uh, let me take this opportunity to thank the colleagues uh, from the media, everyone. And uh, we also thank the main table, general advocates, uh, for availing yourself. So hopefully we will be taking over from, from our side now uh, in terms of making sure that if there are any other uh, requests or uh, questions, we can direct them to ourselves. Uh, that's Brigadier Wan Mraudzi and Mr. Sipongwem in that regard. Uh, with that, thank you very much. And the uh, press briefing has, is adjourned. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, that was good. Thank you. Yeah, I'm glad, well. I'm glad they stuck to their brief as well. I was very, I was very surprised that they really stuck to VBS, I think, because people are so keen to know about this.